imagine how few knobs you'd have to tweak and how little you'd have to tweak them for us to be living in a universe where we just made it through yet another divisive Groundhog Day. Honestly, you complaining about taking the Christ out of Christmas isn't inherently weirder than bitching about taking the God out of Groundhog Day, right? I don't know, you can even see the signs. They would just like bold the G, the O, and the D in ground. Or they'd put like each word on top of each other and then they like, just bold the O in hog and act like they just made an acronym. And, and, then, and then they'd point to a lack of a dedicated Google doodle and call it discrimination against Jesus. I mean, look, the, the two holidays are actually pretty similar. Groundhog Day happens on Candlemas, which is officially the commemoration of the presentation of Jesus at the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. The, the whole groundhog scene at Shadow thing, it comes from the correct observation that sunny days in winter tend to be colder and the incorrect extrapolation that if it was sunny on Candlemas, it would probably be a longer winter. And at some point, animal sees its shadow becomes the measure of sunny day. And there you have it. There's the whole fucking holiday. But every step along the way was coming out of a Christian tradition, which was a bastardization of an old pagan holiday that was way better than its Christian variation. Hell, it's so similar to Christmas that it's actually kind of hypocritical for those Jesus is the reason for the season folks not to bitch about the secularization of Groundhog Day. So yeah, you turn one or two knobs, one or two clicks, and all of a sudden Christians have found a way to make a holiday that's normally celebrated by saying, oh, was that last Sunday? And make it less fun because nothing sucks the fun out of things like taking them seriously, which is, after all, the whole reason we're here, isn't it? I mean, look, while we're twiddling the knobs of seriousness on Groundhog Day, let's be careful not to slip a little bit, right? Because if you think about it, the whole celebration kind of feels like a religion that didn't quite take. Think about this. There's an exclusive group of dignitaries that call themselves the Inner Circle. They have access to a groundhog that legend holds is 125 years old thanks to the immortality punch that he imbibes each summer. He offers up his proclamations in a language that only they can understand. And most importantly, in terms of its similarity to a religion, those proclamations are wrong more often than they're right. So again, twiddle those same knobs a couple more clicks further, and we've gone beyond bitching about the woodchuckless Starbucks cups on the 2nd of February, all the way to a world where people kill each other over whether or not he saw his shadow. A generational rivalries between the Puxatawney Philistines and the Staten Island Chuckites reach a temporary armistice while they join in arms against the Beauregardists of Georgia. And as much as I'd love to cop the hyperbole here, to get there, we'd have to accept that which of us has the better weather predicting marmot is somehow stupider or less consequential than does this bread actually change into a dead guy when I say the magic words? You know, and I think it's instructive to play out this little mental exercise because, look, all we did was take something that's patently false and imagine what it would be like if people took it really seriously. And since saying somebody is religious about something, as damn near synonymous with saying that they're serious about it, there might be a lesson in all this hypothetical knob turning. Look, for a lot of people, religion isn't much more than Groundhog Day. Right? These people go to the church and they nod along and they tell their kids the PG version of the Bible stories as though they were Aesop's fables. If they were in a pinch, they'd probably say, yeah, I actually believe in this thing, but they sure as hell wouldn't act like it or behave like it. And those people tend to lull atheists into this false sense of hope that, you know, maybe we're on our way to a world where those knobs get twiddled back a bit. But to be religious about something is to take it seriously. And the people who sit in the pews and teach it to their children, even when they don't actually believe it themselves, are hardly an indication of nonchalance. Instead, they're evidence that the people who do believe it take it so goddamn seriously that rational people have found it easier to play along than admit that reality is real. Okay, it's a smokescreen to fool atheists and secularists into thinking that there's a path to appeasement. It's just another sign that the problem with religion isn't in the interpretation or the commitment or the form. The problem with religion is that it's religious.